Have you ever played a video game and had an awe-inspiring experience while playing it? This could be seeing how beautiful a view is after spending hours climbing it, beating a really intuitive boss fight that is so challenging and fun to beat, or even just doing one of the mechanics in-game. Whatever this experience is, I am sure that you look back on it very fondly. For me, gaming as a whole gives me that overwhelming feeling that I just described. While I wasn't around at its conception, gaming has grown so much throughout the years. From popular games that came out in the 1970s like Pawn to games that came out in the last, in just the last few years like Red Dead Redemption 2, you can really see how much this industry has evolved in such a short time. Even though the gaming industry as a whole gives me this feeling, specific games sometimes do too, and Minecraft is no exception. This happened to me a lot while playing this timeless game, but I'm talking about when I specifically opened Minecraft's 1.18 Caves and Cliffs snapshot for the first time a few days ago. You know, I've seen the trailers and played some of the snapshots for the Caves and Cliffs update before, but I never expected to see how much love and care can go into a game in such a short time. The sheer evolution to what Caves and Cliffs were before this to what it is now is simply breathtaking, which will for sure change Minecraft forever. Alright, that's enough of what I concluded after the fact. Let me show you all how I got to this conclusion and how the snapshot is revolutionary for Minecraft as a whole and gaming in the future. Upon starting up Minecraft, I started a new world with no expectations since I haven't watched any videos in the new snapshot and because this was the first very experimental snapshot ever made signifying that this was in a very, very early state. Once I loaded into my new world, my theory seemed to have been proven correct since I didn't see much of an immediate difference to the game. I looked around for a bit, looking for the new cliffs because I wanted to leave the real star of the show for later. I kept looking around, hope slowly draining from my mind because I couldn't find anything special. Just then, I looked over and saw a bigger hill and mountain, so I went for it. This is pretty new, I think. I don't know, it just... I don't know, it looks kind of weird, but I'm liking this beginning. I don't know if this is like the cliffs right now, but it looks kind of weird, but I think it could be kind of cool. I don't know. We'll, we'll keep looking. At this point, I was happy with what I've seen so far, but I was eager to find something bigger. I then flew away, and then after frantically searching for a few minutes, I saw it. A HUGE cliff that looked amazing from afar, and it looked even better once I flew up to it. Alright, same as usual, nothing else I can see besides a few reviews. Oh, oh, oh wow. Okay, that's big. All right, let's go up to the- Oh my gosh, this is beautiful. Holy crap. Okay, wait, where- Oh my gosh. My mind immediately started racing about all of the possibilities that will be available in the near future. Of course, it isn't complete, and it shows. But my imagination still went wild of all the types of bases I could build, the high action gameplay from spawning on the mountain, breaking my keyboard because of the goat that hit me off of that mountain, and much more. In all seriousness though, this shattered my expectations. Minecraft has always had its block limit set to 256 since around 2012, and I never expected it to change. I believe this because the higher the build limit is, the more memory and CPU usage that is used. Also, world sizes will take more space since there's more data to load in your hard drive. Minecraft has always been a game that is wildly accessible to a lot of people. I mean, it's kind of one of the reasons why it's so popular, right? So adding a higher block limit may limit the amount of people that can play the game by a little bit unless they can find a solution that would fix this problem. On top of all this, Minecraft world generation has been set as this for years, so it would be a lot, and I mean a lot, of work to change this in the new update, not including the fact that they wanted to make world generation go higher along with it. Nonetheless though, the team over at Mojang has done what I thought they would never do, and did a pretty good job at it, all things considered. Desperate for more content, I switched to spectator mode and started flying below the ground. Little did I know though, I was not ready for what I was about to see. And just like the cliffs part of this update, I underhyped myself because I thought it would be like the old snapshots from Minecraft 1.17 where there is just an occasional new cave type. But boy was I wrong. The instant I went under the ground, I could see a huge spectrum and variety of caves for just miles and miles. It looked beautiful. Gone were the same old five-ish caves that all looked mostly the same, and here comes the new. Vast caves of various sizes, some completely flooded because of the years of erosion and weight from the water from lakes and rivers above, and some are huge open spaces where your voice can be heard for miles. Even in its early stages, the new cave generation for Minecraft is already at a point where it's simply amazing that the game developers could create something like this. Yeah, other games may have created more breathtaking landscapes like in Skyrim, 
As you can see, this mountain in Skyrim is way bigger than the one in Minecraft, and it's also more detailed. The difference between the one in Skyrim and the Minecraft, though, is actually pretty simple. The mountain from Skyrim is the same on every single save of the game in existence, unless you have mods, of course. And just as a side note before I go any further, no, I'm not saying that the mountain that I'm showing from Skyrim is bad. In fact, it's it's beautiful. You can see it's it's the opposite. All that I'm talking about are the differences between the two and how I think that the sheer scale of the things used to make this Minecraft mountain that you see on screen here compared to the one in Skyrim is just awesome. Anyway, another reason why I think this is awesome is because this mountain will never be found again unless someone uses the same seat, of course. According to Apex Minecraft hosting, there are an estimated 18 quintillion 446 trillion 744 billion 73 million 709 thousand wait i f***ed that up all right there's a lot of possible seeds in minecraft as you can see out of all those seeds there are probably millions upon millions of mountains or hills on that one single seed with this in mind think about this one mountain and how this one mountain is unique out of literally quintillions of others that exist the algorithm that mojin developed for procedurally generated mountains and caves are still in development of course but they are at the point now where you can just see the cracks of how revolutionary it will be when this update finally releases to the public and this isn't just for mountains either in my opinion i think that the caves are the more impressive side of this update because there are more blocks down in this part of the world already. I could be wrong about this assumption, but there are probably less blocks above the surface on the Minecraft world since a lot of it is just air. Underground, however, most of it is blocks besides where the caves are, obviously. This would mean that they had to first lower the block limit of the world to negative 64, then delete the old way caves are generated, recreate a whole new system for the way blocks generate into caves, change the way ores spawn entirely, even though they've been the same since the game had these ores added in the first place and who knows what else oh yeah i never even talked about this yet mojin had to change the entire system for the way ores spawn in this new version of minecraft as you can see from this chart certain ores like diamonds are going to spawn less where they used to spawn and now spawn further down in the deep dark part of the map another thing is that ores spawn in a different quantity at different parts of the map now for example i'm pretty sure ores spawn from where stone began under the crust of the surface all the way down to bedrock in the same quantity at any point well this is different now and I'm not sure about that, but this is obviously different now, if that was the case, because iron apparently spawns more in mountainous regions above the surface instead of just underground. And I'll just leave the chart on the screen for a few more seconds for you guys, just in case you want to look at it or take a screenshot of it or something like that. Also, if you guys have any question about the chart or anything in this video for that matter, make sure you guys leave a comment down below, because I'll definitely answer it ASAP. Alright, back to what I was saying before. To accomplish this feat, they would have to spend hours upon hours rewriting the code for this game, which is just awe-inspiring to think that the game developers can care about a game this much. While they aren't perfect, Mojang certainly doesn't cut corners with updates to the game. They go all out, even if it means rewriting some of the essential programs for the game, which is mostly unheard of in the gaming community. Yes, it has happened before, but I'm gonna be honest, most gaming companies don't really do this. In fact, most game developers would do the contrary. They would just cut corners and fall through with their promise without actually following through with their promise if you know what i mean or just give up after some time and this could be for the update of the game or just a playing game itself when it's coming out mojang's different though they took the challenge with open arms. Even with all the difficulties in the world and the difficulties with developing the update for the game, Mojang took this update and ran with it, even if it meant delaying the update that every Minecraft player has been waiting for so long to play. Anyway, at this point, some of you may be saying that this doesn't look that good, graphics-wise, or how it looks compared to other games. So I'm just going to give you guys my opinion as to why this may be more impressive in some ways compared to other games. First of all, graphics-wise. This is Minecraft, a game built on a retro style that a lot of people think looks beautiful regardless of its realism. And if you're not a fan of that, you can just download some shaders. And no, you're right, these graphics may not look as realistic as GTA 5's graphics or any other game like that, but you can't argue that they still stand out in their own way. The next common thing that I think people may argue about is that it doesn't look like a real mountain. I you can see it doesn't look like Mount Everest or something like that, or whatever cave it is. As I've said before, this is the first snapshot for this update, and it's in a very experimental state. Remember, this is the first time that they've done something like this, so this is very experimental. And if you guys want to know how to actually play this for yourself, stay tuned for a video about that.
The point is, the better natural generation for these new and interesting environments are just going to come over time, so we just need to wait for now. Well, I guess we actually don't have to wait that long because I'm editing this video right now and we just got an update. Snapshot number two is out, you guys can download it right now, so they're updating this game really quick and it's honestly highly improved after, what, just the first week? That's really impressive. Alright, back to the video. Regardless of what people may think about this update, I think we can all agree that this is a huge improvement from what caves and quote unquote cliffs previously were even at this phase of the update. In conclusion, even though this is the first snapshot in a long line of other snapshots to come, this snapshot already shows how far they have come and how revolutionary this update is truly going to be once it finally releases. And if you don't agree with me, just take some time and think about how different the mining experience is going to be. From the new way that you have to approach spelunking in caves, to the strategic thinking that you have to do in order to obtain the optimal ore that you're looking for at the highest quantity. Despite whether or not you're excited for this update, look towards the future because Mojang's aspirations shine bright but the hope for this update being truly revolutionary shines even brighter. Hey, thanks for watching. If you guys enjoyed this video, please consider hitting that like button and subscribing to this channel. Before I go, seriously, thank you to every single one of you that did this because it really helps more than you can imagine. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you. All right, see you guys in the next video and bye-bye.